everyone. This is Tanya from Paint Hive Studio. I am also Professor Queen Bee Artist. And, you know, I have been working hard on being a support, uh, being an a, a artistic mentor to everybody that I come across. And sometimes they really like what I do. So I've been asked to do a series of videos. And I thought it would be a great time right now to restart and relaunch what I had started years ago. And I really loved doing it, but I kind of stopped. But these are small paintings on 8x10 frames. And these are my flower series with using um, found materials. Just pieces of material in here to create a little bit of texture as well. I don't know if you can see that. But these are my flower series. And I thought it would be totally appropriate for me to restart this series. And I meant to come on yesterday to start this series. By the way, I hope that everyone had a great Mother's Day. I certainly did. And that's why I didn't start my series yesterday. And so now we're looking at Monday after Mother's Day. And now I'm going to be starting uh, fresh with my new series of small paintings, flowers on small canvases using abstract and, and materials. I love these free abstracts. They're not, you don't have to worry about major details of the reality of a flower. You can just have fun with color and line and shapes and textures and bold colors. I mean, I'm going to be using these really strong colors and I use basics. Basics is not really a very expensive paint to, to purchase and it goes a long way and it's a pretty good um, pigment in there. So use that um, if you're on a budget with anything, the basics is really good. So we're going to start working on these paintings tonight. I just want to explain a little bit more about my substrate. Yes, I'm using an 8x10 uh, gallery wrapped canvas. I've also created these paintings on 8x10 flat panel canvases. Either one is perfectly fine. This one you can hang on the wall without a frame because it has a, a little wooden frame in the back. And you can just put a nail in the wall and just hang it on there. This one you'll have to purchase a, a, a um, frame from the store if you want to hang it on the wall. Or you can just sit it up against something. I mean, it'll sit up if you had something behind it. But these are really, really cool for framing. Let me show you one that I did frame. <clears throat> Look at this one how nice that is. This is a panel in here. It's one of these inside of this cam inside of this frame. Walmart, Michaels, wherever you want to pick up a frame. I mean, I buy sometimes I buy old dilapidated frames and I spray paint them and I do art on the frames. So you can buy any frame anywhere. You could just pop one of these in here and they're really really cool. Here's another one. This one's in a frame as well. It still has the packing material on the corners. But yeah, they're in frames. These ones won't do that well in typical frames, like document frames. You would have to get a shadow box type frame to put these ones in if you wanted to frame those gallery wrap canvases. But we're going to go ahead and do start a painting on an 8x10 gallery wrap tonight. Here's also another idea that I had. This will be another series that I'm going to do later on using uh, acrylic paint and fabric as well. But we're going to do flowers for probably the rest of the month. Flowers, flowers, flowers. See, this would be a good gift for Mother's Day. You can give a flower that will never die. And that's what I think we should do for next year or your mom's birthday. So give a flower or auntie's birthday or grandma's birthday. Give them a painted flower. And these are really, really easy to do. Very easy to do. Anybody can do these. All you have to do is pick some colors, have a couple of paint brushes, have some pieces, scrap fabric, or even paper if you want. But these are more, more sturdy. That's why I like to use the fabrics. And here's all my fabric choices. My mom and I used to do African clothing. We used to sew a lot. So we um, bought a lot of swatches to show our clients what we can make for them. So basically I just use these. I just cut them up and I use these to um, embellish my paintings. 
So what I do is I cut them up into little pieces and I just throw them in a, in a cup of water. This is a little bucket. Get them from Home Depot. Put a little bit of water in here and let them soak for a few hours to get rid of some of the sizing that's in it because you want it to be a little bit more flexible. These are pretty stiff if you don't wet them. So you want to wet them up a little bit and let them get started. In the meantime, when these are soaking, and I let these soak overnight, so and no problem, they're fine. They just soaked in a little water overnight. So while those are soaking, you can go ahead and get started with a painting, actually, on the actual canvas. So we're going to use this baby right here, okay? And I have a paintbrush here. Make sure you have some kind of blotting device nearby because you always have to make sure you don't have too much water in there so i'm going to use a couple different brushes depending on my size of my areas that i want to paint and i'm basically going to use my little craft brushes instead of my extra long brushes today um you could also use a palette knife to do any techniques and we'll do that too i'll put it down right here so i won't forget to show you <clears throat> I am having serious allergy issues today. It is springtime. So I guess that's what's going on, right? <clears throat> I'm just taking out a few brushes that I might want to utilize. So I have a wide flat and I have a medium flat. Then I have a filbert. And then now I want to have maybe a round for some details. This round is kind of crunky on the top. I don't know. Let's see how it looks if I put water on it. You want these bristles to stay together, especially when you want to do some fine line work, like what's going on in this painting right here. If you want to do some line work, you need to have a nice, thin point on there. So I wet it, and it seems to be doing much better. So I'll use this one. And what else? Oh, I think I have enough. This is a small canvas, so you really don't need a big old chunky brush like this. Unless you want to just cover up your whole surface really quickly, you can. I'm just going to go ahead and use this one. And sometimes I don't even start off with a pre-drawing. I think that in art expression, you should just kind of go for it sometimes. Just release, go for it, be creative. Don't have any restrictions and constraints in your mind about what it should look like and what the shape is. That's why I love abstract. And these are abstracts because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Look at my containers. Look at these. Have you ever seen a flower pot that looks like these? Nope, probably not. These are flower pots. They're very abstract, very loose, very colorful, very just out of the box shapes. So don't worry about the shapes. Just make shapes. Just release yourself and make shapes. So the first thing you want to do is... Where's my palette? Oh, it fell down on the floor. I have a palette here. This is a paint. This is just a regular styrofoam little plate. You can do round if you want round. I get these from the Dollar Tree or 99 cent only store. So I'm just going to put a selection of paints on my, on my plate. And I'm just going to let it flow onto my canvas how I feel. I'm not gonna even make any plans. Just gonna put a few colors on my palette here. You definitely wanna have some black and white. And the black, you're probably gonna use a minute amount of. Black is very, very strong. So you don't always need a lot of this. So, oops, I put too much anyway. And you want to have white on this palette because white is going to help a lot of your colors either be more of a tint or a tint color, meaning that it's a lighter shade of red or a lighter shade of green or a lighter shade of pink or a gray if you use some black with the white. So the white helps to do that. Also, the white helps to create an opaqueness to some of these hues. Sometimes they are very transparent. You can see through them. And it's okay if you want to do sort of like a watercolor. You can dilute it out with a little white and a little water and make like a watercolor type of idea. Like this one right here. This is kind of like a little watercolor up here at the top. So just have fun with it. You can overlap colors. 
you can blend colors there's a little bit of blending going on between the red and the yellow i really like this one i love the glow it's a nice glow back there so now i have a few colors here and also <clears throat> you want to know your mixing in case you don't have a color you want to play around with you should have a color chart a color chart or a color wheel here's a color wheel or a color chart to help you make new colors i had a tutorial on youtube talking about these two things as well and let's grab some yellow i like yellow i also use um iridescent colors and metallic colors these are beautiful in these pieces so a lot of times i'll add a little bit of iridescent gold or uh, silver in some of my paints and then i'll paint in there you probably can't see it with the light and everything but this one is shining and that it's shiny because there's this in it some acrylic um metallic gold paint and we'll be using some of that too so I basically put a bunch of primary colors on my palette, which is really cool. I love it. Love it. I can do a lot of paintings with just that. Just that. So, okay, my paint palette right here. Got my paint brushes here. So let's get started. Here we go. Always make sure you have a little fluid in your brush. Dip it in the water and get that nice and moisturized, okay? Uh, I don't want to use this one first. I'm going to use my flat one. Only because I'm going to do my backspace first. I'm going to do my backspace first. So I want a red table. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of this red paint. I want to get it sloshy on both sides. Not too goopy goopy and not a lot. And I want to create a red table. Okay. But in the meantime, at the same time, I'm going to create a line where my flower pot might end up being. And then I'm going to put a red table right behind it, like that. You just have to go for it, you guys. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. Just be loose and free with it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is what kind of top do I want? Rinse off the brushes in between colors. Let's go with a light blue. I'm going to go with a light blue. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to a, some blue. And make sure you hydrate your brush a little bit. And I'm going to put that blue. I kind of want it to look watercolorish. And then also, I think that I want to go with some yellow with that blue. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of yellow and do two sides. Put let the red, the yellow be on one side and let the blue be on one side like that. And I'm just going to go down here, back and forth, and it's almost green. But I like the way that the streaks of the blue. Also, let me go ahead and kind of make my top here happen on my my pot i like the way that the uh, streaks of blue and yellow are kind of making this green but you can still see the streaks of yellow i'm not mixing it in solidly and i'm doing light strokes up and down and again you can go ahead and touch up your edges if you want at this point. And I'm just doing a mixture of both of the colors. These um, flower series back in 2013, I was going through kind of like a downtime period, I think. And I was kind of, you know, I'm a breast cancer survivor, so you know the whole spiel. I was going through some stuff, so I decided that I needed to rejuvenate with painting, using my painting, using my skills. I'm going to put a little bit more blue over here, y'all. Just a little bit more blue to 
to richen it up a little bit. Is that a word, richen? And also, look, you can skip around a little. You don't have to make lines. They can be skipping around. And I like this blue. This is a, uh, what color blue is this? This one's called um, primary blue. Primary blue. And this is the best blue that you can use if you want to make some green. If you don't have any green, you mix some of this blue with the yellow and you get nice green. So what I'm doing is barely touching my canvas. And as you can see, I have paint strokes. You can see my brush marks. This is a very expressive drawing and I want to show my brush marks. You want to show the brush marks. You want this to be like a human did it. It's not a print. It's not a graphic art from a computer. It's a person. We're people painting and having some fun. So now I have my, my background and I have my ground down here. So now I want to go ahead and start having some fun with this pot. I'm going to rinse that brush off and I'm going to get a smaller one to fit in the spot a little bit better. So I'm going to use the smaller one now. Hydrate it. Get the bristles nice and hydrated. Okay. So now let's see. What do I want to do? Maybe I want to do, and like I said, it doesn't matter what colors you use. Whatever you want. It's whatever you want. I think I want, uh, let's go with some pink. Yeah, let's go with some pink. So what I'm going to do with this brush now is actually draw some lines. Start somewhere and just draw a line. And this will be my pink area, at least part of it. I'm going to do that. I'm going to split it again. This will be my pink side. And again, I like to just kind of put paint, full paint or whole paint or I don't know what you call it, um, paint <laughs> on my brush and just without mixing so much cause, because I like to see the two colors mingle. I like to see the two colors mingle. So I'm just going to do this like that. Turn the brush on the side to get in a thin area. And I like to see the darks and the lights happen. So that's what I'm going to do with the pink. Rinse my brush off and go for a new, new color. What's going to be my next? Okay, I want a purple. So two colors. I can make purple with red and blue. So I'm going to pull a little bit of red off my batch here and pull a little bit of blue into there. And I'm going to make a purple. But sometimes you have to add white to this. This purple looks very, very dark. So if you add a little bit of white, I'm going to moisturize my brush just a little bit more and go in here and start stirring some more because I want to thin out that paint a little bit more. Now I'm going to grab some white and I'm going to mix it in there just to pop that purple. You're going to see that purple pop. See that purple popping? <laughs> Okay, go ahead and rinse off your brush. Okay, so now that we have our pot, we have our background and our red table, let's start deciding what kind of flowers we want to put in here. I keep it really simple because this is not about flowers. This is about movement. This is about color. This is about shapes. This is about refreshing yourselves and relaxing with something interesting to do. So it's not all about what the flower looks like it's all about you having free expression for yourselves so now what i'm going to do is hmm, i don't want to outline a flower that's not how i usually do it so what i'm going to do is put my dot in the middle for whatever flower i want to start with okay i'm going to make a dot here i'm going to make another dot here for my centers some can be larger than others. And then I'm going to put maybe hmm, one more dot over here for a flower that's hanging off the side. And these dots can serve, these white dots can serve as a, a foundation for whatever color you want to put on top of them at the end. So that's the center of the flower. Okay. So now I'm going to just take my filbert brush. This one's kind of 
rounded on, on the edges a little bit. It's not as flat as this one. You can use either one. You just have a different look at the end. So now let's see, what do I want to do for my flower? Let's go with a, hmm, maybe, what color flower do I want? I don't want a green flower. I don't want a red flower. Oh, well, maybe I should do a red flower. No, I don't want a red flower. Let's go with some blue flowers. Periwinkle. Let's do some periwinkle flowers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. Either you can start this way and come that way, but I like to like fan it out. I like to do fast stroke flowers. So what I'm going to do is get in here like that and do this, do that, do this, do that. Make sure you're hydrated on your brushes because if they get dry, your brush strokes are going to do this. You're not going to get a very good amount of paint on your brush. Turn your brush on the side so that you end up with a point flat here and you turn it as you go out. Or you can do it flat all the way and then go back and turn it and make a point. Make sure your brush is hydrated, flat, and fan it out. So you can get your points turn your canvas I always have to turn my canvas because my shoulder can't do all the moves I needed to do and see this one will go off the page so we don't really need a point there and you see I'm adding more color to my brush as I go around And you kind of want all your petals to be the same. And that's one flower that's kind of hanging off the side of the canvas over here. So let's go ahead and put another one over here. A little bit of white, a little bit of blue. A little bit of white, a little bit of blue. Ooh, I like that a lot. And I'm turning my brush as I drag to get that effect. Oops. Kind of went into my center too much. That's because I need to turn my canvas. Turn the canvas. And you might want to, you know, be aware of what petals are falling over other petals because you want that contrast. So like I have this darker blue here, but I have a lighter blue right there to give it a little bit more contrast. So wherever you are in your painting, just make some decisions on how you want to provide contrast between your colors. I think that's beautiful. Okay, we'll go back in here and we'll fix that later. Once it dries a little bit, then we can go put other colors in there. So now let me just go with a pretty bright one up here. Pretty bright blue. Like a real baby blue. This is really cool. Really, really cool. So you can see I'm going all the way around and I'm turning my canvas as I create these petals. Here, I have my three blooms here, okay? Clean off the brush, make some decisions on what you want to do next. <clears throat> so let's see, I think I want some green streaming kind of foliage coming out from underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. <clears throat> and where is my skinny brush? Here it is my skinny brush just to get started with it I'm gonna do a little bit of green and white a little bit of green and white together and let's say I want to put like some leafy things coming out over here just kind of hanging down ferny things something really loose abstract it doesn't matter this is not a real thing this is your painting 
and it's very creative it's very colorful it's very free it's whatever you want okay i gotta hydrate my brush a little bit more i'm not getting good adhesion right here all right and i'm adding a little bit of white as well And just remember, you want to go behind certain things and in front of certain things. And you see how I've kind of skipped that one just to kind of get behind there. Just to have some freedom. All right. So, now we can start decorating it. We have the basic things down here. we got the blooms, some foliage. Let's go ahead and start decorating some of this um, flower pot. And also outlining some of our blooms in here. We also need to start working with this. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So now I want to, I'm going to take some white and do some outlining in my flower pot. You can probably do this step before you put anything that's overlapping it. That might have made more sense. And me, I get so anxious and excited when I paint. I just figure it out as I go. And sometimes I have to learn from those sporadic things that I do. But I, like I said, I don't want to plan it. I just want to move. I just want to keep on moving with my brush, with my creative... Um, impulses here and without thinking so much okay so now what i want to do is this part right here or maybe down here i'm going to put fabric down here okay so this part in here i want to do maybe some more designs so i'm just going to put some dots again this is your painting you can do whatever elements you want in this painting your painting keep it loose keep it fun keep it explorative keep it rich don't try to make it be too hard to do because then you don't want to do it just move so now what I'm gonna do same little round brush what I have to do is maybe detail my petals just a little bit more and what i want to use is black to do that so i'm going to grab some water on the tip of this little brush and move some paint out away from the main batch and mix it because this paint has to thin down a little bit and there's thinning mediums on the market that you can buy to help with thinning your acrylic paints but if you're on a budget and you're trying to do have some fun at home without having to go buy more stuff this is what you do you just play with the paint play with the paint so now i have a little bit of this mixed up with some water because what i'm trying to do is break it down to almost like an inky consistency so that it's not too thick and clumpy and you literally could just have another container like a little small cup and and put some water in it and put a little paint in there stir it up until it breaks down so you can have enough so i think i have enough for what i want to do so now what i'm doing is i'm rolling my small paintbrush i know y'all hear my dogs but we are all working from home these days <laughs> so i decided my shut-in time is going to be creative and having some fun. So now, what I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to give just some very loose flower-type shapes around each of these blue pieces. And be careful about the overlapped, the overlapping areas. This, this part can be testy creating this and you're not really trying to write like it's a pencil because you really can't it's a paintbrush so you have to flow it you have to just make a move and go for it i'm going to get back into these petals and do so oops i covered up my petal 
are going to look great. You don't want it to be too thick. Oops, I made it too thick. Keep it nice and loose. Sometimes, sometimes it's hard to make these thin lines. You've got to have the right tools. You have to have the right tools. And I know that I'm saying you want to use what you already have so you don't have to go out and buy new things. So um, using a Sharpie marker could be a possibility with outlining some of your blooms instead of using a paintbrush if you don't have a really thin tip like this one. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to switch to a different brush that might let me have a little bit more control. And it's going to be a flat brush, a really thin flat brush. Because my, like I said out in the beginning, that that brush didn't seem right. But I tried to make it work. But obviously, it didn't work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this brush with at a uh, horizontal orientation. And I'm just going to see that makes a nicer line. See, just switching up. Just switching up. Yeah, this is way better. A way better feel because that other brush wasn't it wasn't firm enough and the bristles were kind of dilapidated so I'm using a flat small flat brush you guys also don't worry you know you don't you just don't hesitate to turn your your palette your canvas around as much as you need to make it comfortable for you to make the moves that you need and you do have some overlap much better so flat brushes are in flat brushes are in and the round brush is out for this project much more control with this one and I'm actually kind of following the shapes of the petals as I put them this brush gives me way more control and I'm barely touching it I'm very I'm featherweight I'm featherweight on my project because you don't want a big thick gloppy line on there you want to keep it nice and thin and delicate turn it turn it turn it and just be aware when you get behind something you want to just do the part that you see. You don't want to overlap in the wrong spots. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Also, I'm going to do a little bit of a backdrop behind my, my leafy things. My little leafy things that I created here. So I'm going to take the same flat brush and I'm going to go really gently on one side. Sometimes I have to put my elbow down. So you might have to rest your elbow just to give yourself some stability when you when you got a detail that you have to do and it's tedious like that. So this is just giving those leaves a little bit more dimension where they look like they're lifted away from the pot and there's a shadow. So I like that look. Okay, so now as far as your, your fabric goes, now what I want to do is I want to add, I'm adding some more colors, see? You basically, this thing is going to be really colorful. So I want to select a few that's kind of close to what I have on the, on the painting. And I like this one, it has some orange and blue. And I need to have another tray. Grab another tray. I'm gonna go have this one only because that's all I have handy. So now what you do is you put your your wet pieces of fabric that you want to use, and maybe two or three pieces for me on this particular piece. Maybe just two. 
Well, here's three. I can use this one. So I have three pieces. All right. And I have some handy dandy Elmer's glue. Well, this is stock Elmer's glue. I get the really big one gallon jug and I just put them in squeeze bottles. So this is my Elmer's glue. And you want to put a little bit on your pieces, not a lot. And you want to massage them in. But I should have had on some gloves, right? But anyway, I'm not scared. Let's go for it. I know I have that really beautiful red table, and I don't know if I want to add the orange down there at the bottom. So guess what I'm going to do? This is my painting, and I want to do something different. I'm going to put this. I'm going to put it in that purple area right there. No, not. Open it up a little. Oops, that's two pieces. No, literally, I'm just going to go down here. I'm going to put it down here. So you want to stick that on there. Stick it down. And again, your, your fabric needs to be pretty manageable. You want to soak it so that you can manipulate it like this and i love to put textures in my artwork because i like to do what's called a dry brush technique and i probably won't be able to show you that one in this session but we can stop and let this one dry and i can come back and complete it so you can see what the dry brush technique is it's really cool so let me add one more little piece i like this one and I'm just kind of keeping my red table in mind. But I just wanted to add this little extra textural element down here at the bottom. And you could twist them. You can ball them up. You can fold them and just have fun with them. You definitely don't want them to be flat. You need them to have bunch, be bunched up like that. Look at that. Can you see it? I'm going to put it in profile so you can see. See how it's standing up away from the canvas? You want that to happen like that. Have it standing up away from the canvas. All right, so we have that setting. Um, I need to clean my fingers. Yeah, I didn't prep myself for that one. Put my fingers in this water right here. Clean that glue off. I was supposed to have on gloves, but I didn't do it. All right, so now, what I want to do is get back in here with the paintbrush and do some more stuff in here to make that really beautiful. And then also we have to, to get the centers of the flowers in and do just a few more details. Just have some more fun with shapes, textures. Um, did we use any? Let me go ahead and get my small flat again. The smallest flat I have. And what I want to do is get inside of these little blooms and put some red in there. So what I'm going to do is just kind of pop in a little red in between in the middle of each one of these blades or, or petals. And then I'm going to put a little bright on top of these when they set just a tad. So I'm just giving this flower a little extra character. All of them. And you want to start in the middle and, and fan out just a little. Just little hints of color. Just little hints of color just to give it an extra dimension. And like I said, these are supposed to be fun and relaxing. Don't make this thing be a stress out, okay? Just get in there and make flowers. Make things, shapes, objects. So I am just taking a little bit of paint to each one of these just to enhance that area just a little. And then what I'm going to do is grab a little white and go next to it or kind of in it a little just to make that pop. You don't want to cover up your red. Don't cover it up. Kind of go next to the red with the white.
it will turn pink and if you don't mind pink uh, you'll be fine but I just don't want to mix it up too much I just want to kind of enhance the brightness in the center of the flower well uh, on the petals all right so now I'm gonna, since I have white on that brush I'm just gonna go for this yellow and I'm just gonna blob some yellow in the middle Oop, I already have red on there so I need to wash that off you don't want to mix it I don't want it to be orange I want it to be yellow so I'm gonna grab some more white and a little bit of yellow white and yellow white and yellow and again I don't I don't really mix it up to where it's a buttery blend I like to see the different colors pop so now what I'm doing is just popping in some blotting in some yellow and white in that center and you want to kind of keep it round and if your white if your other paint below it isn't dry then you have to wait just a couple minutes to let it get a skin on there I have my ceiling fan on here in the room so my paint is drying up pretty fast so if you have a ceiling fan, you want to try this. I don't know if I want to recommend that to you if you're a beginner at this because you might get frustrated if things are drying up too fast for you. So take it slow. Take your time. Have fun. So now I have like a textured, by blotting the brush up and down in that center, my paint is a little bit textured in there. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. but Maybe not. Let's see. You can see it. Yeah, there you go. So I'm going to clean off my brush. And again, this has to dry before we can finish it up with the, the metallic colors. The metallic colors go on top first before, I'll, before we finish. So now what I'm going to do is maybe take a little bit of black again. And I'm going to do some other details in these, these boring looking areas. Yeah, I said boring. I'm just going to take my brush and make shapes. My paint's not responding. So I'm just making some kind of just abstract design on this part of my canvas, of my and it's just something else else to do. It's kind of like a zen tangle. It just keeps growing and growing and growing as you paint and it morphs into something new every time you make a new move. So don't, don't um, inhibit yourself. Just be free. Just be free to do what you want. And my paintbrush is kind of acting weird. But okay, I'll make it work. So I like that. And I experiment. I experiment as I go. You guys are welcome to experiment as you go. I recommend it. So let me go ahead and grab some of this blue. And I'm going to do maybe some more pets over here. Just to give it some kind of textural design on this side. And I'm not going to do the whole thing. So I'm just doing things that just give it some extra character. And now I'm going to grab some white with the flat brush. Where is it? I'm just going to go next to some of these blue spots. I don't want to mix it. I just, uh-oh, put green on there. How did I do that? I don't want to mix it. You just want to kind of 
do something next to the dark areas so they pop. Don't mix it. Look at that. It changes it all already. And I think I'm going to go back over here and re-outline this one in white. I don't really care for the black one. And now what I'm going to do is something with these greens on the side. I'm going to go ahead and grab some bright yellow and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. So now what we're going to do is we have to wait for maybe 20 minutes or so, maybe 30 minutes for this all to dry right here. And then I can come back in here and we can start working with the metallic colors to give this whole thing another dimension. I'm going to take this the end of this brush real quick. And I'm going to put, see, it, it just keeps changing. I'm going to put some red dots in here. Just keeps changing. That almost looked like a happy face. So I'm just dropping in some red dots now to just really give it some more definition and dimension. Nice. Very good. Okay, so I'll be back in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Okay, we're back. It t actually took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take to dry this. Usually I'm doing this in the daytime and we have nice sun and these things dry pretty fast. Um, so what I had to do was get my blow dryer and blow dry it for about 15 minutes. I let it air dry for about 30 minutes and it wasn't dry enough. So then I went to get the blow dryer and blow dried it. So now you can tell it's nice and tough now. So we can go, we're going to go ahead and move forward with the metallic dry brush and also some other enhancements with this. There was one step that I kind of left out that you might want to do before you do the colors around the flower. But I kind of like it on top of the colors, the red and the white in there. You can still see it just a little bit. So what I've done is I've got in my, my um, wide flat brush. You don't have to use a wide one. You can use excuse me the skinnier one but I'm just gonna go ahead and use the wide one put a little bit of metallic paint <coughs> excuse me a little bit of this metallic paint this is gold metallic right on the corner clean the brushes off from all the other paint and let it be a little bit moist not drippy definitely not drippy you want to dry out as much water as you can but the brush still needs to be moisturized just a little bit so now you want to just take a little bit of this gold and what I'm doing is going in between my my flower petals and just doing a little swipe of uh, gold in there. And one load can do at least two of the petals. Like that. <clears throat> so now you got this kind of shiny thing. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks really, really good. So I'm going to do that to all my petals. Like I said, you don't have to use the wide brush with the large, flat, square part. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do it with the smaller. You can use a smaller flat brush like this one and get the same effect. Or probably even a little bit more controlled since this is an 8x10 canvas. So I'm just putting in a little bit of paint in each one just to enhance it, just a tad. This gold stuff really is nice. The silver is nice too. I usually use the silver one when I'm doing blacks and blues, a lot of blues, dark blues, because it kind of brings it up a little bit more. It brightens it. So I'm just kind of gently dragging a little bitty glob of it across very quickly 
you want it thick enough where you can see it and it's kind of still a dry brush technique and I, ju I just added extra paint to my brush so that I get uh, some thicker thicker areas in certain areas thicker places in certain areas thicker marks and I'm just gonna do a little bit on my it's just really really not such a big deal to put it on but it's a big deal for visibility visual quality so now what I'm gonna do is wash off my larger brush and you want to dry that off really really good because now we're gonna be working on a dry brush technique down here on the fabric so you put your paint you put your brush on your paint where you're just painting up one side of your brush. The other side doesn't need any paint. Just one side. And then you want to just kind of rub it on there till you get a nice thin layer. Not a lot. You don't want a lot. Not at first. Start off slow. And then you want to come across. And I'm even going to put some on the red. I like the way this gold looks on the red. Especially when it catches the edges of the canvas. That looks really cool. And you can go in between your leaves and whatever else is in the way. And now you want to dry brush some thicker, thicker uh, applications on your brush. And it's still just a sweep, a swipe over the textures that brings out the folds. You dry brush your, your red area or your flat areas as well you're not putting a lot of paint on the brush at once for the the dry brush technique on the table but you do want to have a significant amount to go over that fabric so those humps can catch some of the the paint as it goes across loves it now what I'm gonna do is go up here with a little smear of gold on my brush and I'm just going to kind of go down in areas where I'm not covering up my leaf, my petals on my flowers, trying to avoid that. I'm just kind of going in between them and around them. Dry brush techniques with a thin layer of paint. Thin, thin, thin. Now, of course, the brush is not all the way dry. But you do want to keep these brushes moisturized so that they can hold the paint on the brush while you're doing this process and it's gonna move around nicely if it's a dry dry brush with the paint on there trying to do a dry brush technique it's just not gonna be it's not gonna work out so you kind of just want to dab in some some gold in certain areas where you can get in there and i'm also going to take some globs of uh, gold and go over these black marks just put a dot on each one of these and like i said this is like zentangle it's it keeps growing and growing and growing and growing as you work on it. So I'm layering these black dots with some gold just to give it another detail that I think I kind of like. Those black dots were looking pretty one dimensional or two dimensional maybe. It's got a height and a width but it doesn't have a depth. Look at that. That just gives it a whole nother level of pop. Oh, I can put some on the blue ones too. Just a little dot, just to give it extra. Just some extra. Now I think that I love it. I think that this one is done. It's beautiful. Don't forget to sign it. Now, I always say rule of thumb, if your abstract artwork can be hung any kind of way on the wall, sideways, right upside, uh, top side up, if it can be hung any old kind of way on the wall, you want to sign it on the back, okay? But if it only can go one way on the wall, you can go ahead and sign it on the front, okay? So what I usually do is a Sharpie not usually but with these small paintings and my brush isn't so small some people can do it i'm not real good at it but you know i've tried it i'm trying to find my sharpie 
Where is it? Come on, Sharpie. What are you doing to me? So yeah, you want to go ahead and find a tool to write your name. And this marker works just fine. And this is 2020. And that's all you want to do. Voila. It's a beautiful painting. And now that I've gotten started with my first one in years, I'm re these are being reborn now. Guess what? You guys are going to see some more. I'm going to start another one and then we'll meet again later to see what my progress is. So I'll see you back at the next little small painting flower garden. These are really beautiful, nice gifts. People love these. I've given away so many of them. So try it out. See what you see if you like it. See what you can do with it. I'd love to see them. So if you see this on a post, show me your picture too. I want to see what you guys are doing as well. So show me on the post that you see because these are some of these are going to go on Instagram. And uh, let me know what you see, what you think. PaintHiveStudio.com. This is Professor Queen Bee Artist signing out. And I'll see you at the next video. Peace out.